These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. All right, so they asked you for the free body diagrams, and it looks like you did fine uh, on that. So you have a buoy in the water, um, and the buoy is being affected upward by the buoyant force, downwards by its weight, the weight of the buoy, ah. and downwards by the tension of the rope. And then you saw that uh, on this weight here, on this underwater weight, underwater weight, there would be the same tension pointing up. There would be a buoyant force here. And there would be the weight weight of the weight. <laughs> Not very convenient here. The weight of the weight. All right. So you did fine on that. What is the magnitude and direction of the buoyant force on the weight? I feel like I've already forgot some of this concept. <laughs> so the magnitude of the magnitude and the direction of the buoyant force on the, on the weight. weight. Okay, they gave you some points on that, but I don't think you actually got to the answer there, so we can start going through that together. Okay. Uh, so let's start figuring out as much as we can here. So we've got our buoyant force. Now, it, it should be possible to, uh, now, we, one thing that's very important, so you're right, the thing that's confusing here is that there's more than one object. Mm -hmm. Now, the key when there's more than one object is we have to use the same symbol for things that are the same and different symbols for things that are different. That, that seems pretty trivial, but that actually is the key to this type of problem. Yeah. Um, for example, are these two tensions the same or different? They're the same. Yeah, at least in magnitude. Right. So I can use the same symbol for both of them, T. But there's no reason to think that the two weights are the same. Yeah. Um, why don't we call this object one and object two instead of calling it the buoy and the weight? Because otherwise we're going to get confused between buoy, B for buoyant force and B for buoy and W for weight and W for MG. So let's call it one and two. All right. So and also I just call this, I'm going to leave out the B here, but this is the buoyant force on object one. Mm -hmm. And this is the buoyant force on object two. And here's the weight of object one and the weight of object two. So that's what I meant when I said different symbols for things that are different but the same symbol for things are the same, like the tension. That's one of the keys to doing a multiple object problem. Now we can actually figure out this weight. Um, how do we figure out the weight? So I think that when, what I was sort of confused about is if I wanted to find the, the weight force for something that's not completely submerged. Right. I think that it's just a, like using like Newton's second law kind of thing. So just like adding up the force. It's actually thing. even simpler than that. Now, what might be, so how do you usually figure out weight? We're just going to use the same way that we use, what's the general formula for weight? You actually already had that when you took the test. What was the formula that you actually wrote down on the test for weight? Is mass times gravity. That's right. And it turns out is that we're going to use the same exact thing here. The formula for the weight is just m times g. The magnitude of the weight is just m times g. That's actually what you wrote when you're going through the, the test. So we can actually calculate that. Um, we might as well actually get a number for that. Do you get to use a calculator? Oh. I guess uh, they figured you could work that out here. So um, the mass of the buoy here was 1,500. Okay, um, so um, then uh, this weight over here, M1 times G, so it would be 1,500 times G. Does he let you use 10 
for G? Or? Yeah, okay, that's nice. So we'll approximate G is 10. So then this way would be 15,000? 15,000 newtons. Then we can do the same thing for this. Well, this will be more difficult because they didn't actually tell us this mass. We won't work this out quite yet. Okay. Now, by the way, I think the thing that was confusing you is, um, it, so how do you figure out the weight of an object? It's just m times g. What you might have been thinking of is the concept of apparent weight. Um, that's the idea that when you take something into the water, it feels like it weighs less than it normally does. So there is another concept called apparent weight that you could figure out from Newton's second law. But that actually was not something that's necessary for this particular problem. Okay. Because the apparent weight isn't a real force. It's just how something feels like it's weighing. So since we're trying to solve this, since they didn't ask us for the apparent weight, we don't need it. We'll just use the actual weight of the object. Okay, so what's the magnitude and direction of the buoyant force on the weight? So they were asking for this now, the buoyant force on this weight. And you're trying to figure that out using Newton's second law again. Uh, but again, uh, it turns out that that's simpler. Um, it's just like the weight. We don't need Newton's second law to figure out the weight because there's just a cookbook formula for the weight. But we don't need Newton's second law to figure out the buoyant force because there's just a cookbook formula for the buoyant force. Do you happen to have that written down? Remember what yeah, that is? Yeah, I think is? it's um, rho g mean volume. That's right. Okay. Is, is that because I think that's where my confusion was? I, I remember that, and I think I probably um, just mixed them up. So when something is not fully submerged, you can't use that equation for buoyant force unless you know how much, like the, what the displacement is. Right. Okay. And if I didn't, so for that, for the buoy, for the first one, if I wanted, if I didn't know, well, if I wanted to find the buoyant force, then that's when I would use like net forces. Then, yeah, maybe we'll get to that in, in, in another part. But you're right, we, um, it might be more difficult to find the buoyant force here because this is only partially submerged. I hadn't noticed that, but it looks like you're right. That's the big difference between these two things. So how can we reflect that in the formula here? This is not the volume of the object. It should be written like this, V sub. It's only the volume of the portion of the object that is submerged. Here we have the density of the fluid. Uh, this And uh, this just gives us the magnitude. So. I like to put a dot on top of things when they just show the magnitude. So this would be the magnitude of the buoyant force, the density of the fluid times g times the portion of the object that is submerged. However, that won't give us many complications here because this is completely submerged. So yeah, we can go through and try to work that out. So what would we need to plug in then? memory of the problem. Reread the information you were given. What information did they give us that would help us here? Oh, no, so you were right. You're absolutely right. You just did the calculation. That's right. So they gave us the dimensions of 2 by 1 by 0.5. Uh -huh. Right. So the volume would be 2 by 1 by 0.5. And you were right. I'm wrong. That would just be 1 cubic meter. Okay. So he's making everything work out nicely here. Mm -hmm. So that's right. That's how we would find uh, the volume in this case. So basically what we're doing is, in this particular special case, the volume that is submerged is the entire volume of the object. So we can just figure out the volume of the object. So we ended up here with the buoyant force on object two was what? 10,000. Yeah, 10,000 newtons. Mm -hmm. Good. One thing we should always do is, well, maybe, maybe we'll come back to that. OK, so uh, all right. So this is a real important uh, idea. A lot of the course is just about learning new forces and learning special formulas for them. For example, 
the weight is a special force and it has a formula m times g. Or kinetic friction is a special force and it has a formula mu k times n. Or the spring force is a special force, it has a formula k times x. Well, the buoyant force just fits right into that pattern is that it has its own special formula. It's just a little bit more complicated. So uh, that's a common mistake to think that we need Newton's second law to find the individual force. Sometimes you do, but your first resort should just be to use your special formula. Just, um, so, just like we would use a special formula for kinetic friction, mu, time, mu times the normal force. You just use this special mm -hmm. formula. OK, so we can write in here that this is Ten thousand newtons. <laughs> <laughs>